Super Mario Odyssey is an amazing game, but it wasn't perfect. There were some kingdoms I felt like they had so much potential with, and seriously could have been some of the most unique and entertaining Mario levels and worlds of any Mario game ever, and they just saved for a boss fight. Yeah, it was kind of disappointing, and I kind of want to go back in to see some of these kingdoms and talk about them individually until at least the next Mario game is finally released, Nintendo, please. But the one we're talking about today is none other than the Ruin Kingdom. The one, in my eyes, is the most missed potential of all time. This kingdom could have been phenomenal. It had a creepy aesthetic to it, something that was different for the Mario series. And just look at the boss battle for this kingdom. It was the Lord of Lightning, a giant realistic dragon in a Mario game. I remember people's reactions to this was just hilarious. They were just so shocked that this was a thing. It was like a Dark Souls boss slapped into a Mario kingdom. And that was great, but the kingdom itself, the world itself, the level itself just wasn't great. And today, I want to sit down and talk about the Ruined Kingdom and how they could have made this kingdom the greatest Mario world of all time. Mario lands in Crumbleton, which seems to be a past civilization that has been destroyed. Now, we really don't know what has happened to them. Is it all thanks to this dragon? Was the dragon part of the civilization? Well, what happened? Well, throughout the stage, or the little bit of the stage that we get before the boss fight, you can see dragon markings and claws all over the place, which make me assume that maybe this place was ruined all thanks to the Lord of Lightning. Whoever once lived down below the clouds were all destroyed and broken thanks to this dragon alone, which ruined this kingdom completely. It was probably once a thriving civilization, but now it's in complete destruction. This can be argued because once Mario frees the dragon of Bowser's corruption, the dragon never attacks Mario, it just sits there and stares at him. And also, if you look at these scratch markings on these platforms, they are followed by some swords that are left there, but they are Bowser's swords, the things that actually pinned the crown down on the Lord of Lightning in the first place. So it looks like this could have been a quick battle between Bowser and the Lord of Lightning as Bowser tried to take control of it. Now, this might also explain that the dragon was maybe never evil, or at least maybe the dragon never did ruin this place and in the first place. Maybe it's just the remnants of what's left of the Roman Kingdom. This dragon is the last thing that's left of the civilization. Enough about the lore, let's talk about the place itself, because there seems to be tons of broken down castles, monuments, and structures below the clouds, but we just never go down there. We are stuck on this one pillar up in the sky, and that's all we get to see of this place. And I think that is a huge missed opportunity, because Nintendo could have seriously flushed out everything below the clouds. So first off, we could have had an entire ruined kingdom. Imagine Hyrule, or even the castle town of Hyrule, all in ruins like it is in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but a little bit more in the Mario art style, or at least the Odyssey art style, where there's just broken castle towns, broken buildings, broken homes, and maybe instead of the actual people that once lived there, we can interact and talk to the ghost of those people, and maybe that is the main NPC of this kingdom. They're like ghosts, or maybe even knights that were once here that are just laying there. Now these wouldn't actually be based on like the booze or anything like that. That's not to say that booze couldn't appear in this kingdom, but they would be their own new style of ghost specific for this kingdom, maybe just looking a certain way. Uh, but I would love to have kind of interactions and maybe talking to the different NPCs will tell you exactly what happened in those kingdoms. Maybe one of the moons is based on a detective work where you have to go around talking to different NPCs and finding the mystery as to what happened and what made this kingdom fall in the first place. Imagine doing all that and finally coming up on the dragon at the very end instead of the way we fought Lord of Lightning in Mario Odyssey. Imagine if we had to go on this long goose chase looking through clues and finding scratch marks on walls and on buildings and eventually leading up to the final boss fight would have been phenomenal. This was their chance to once again do a very creepy world which is something that we've actually seen a lot within the Mario universe. All the way back to the classic games with the Boo ghost houses and even in games like Galaxy 64 and even Sunshine had some very creepy areas 
Even Mario 3D World, for crying out loud, had ghost houses. So it's actually really insane to me that we didn't have any type of spooky world to explore and collect things within Super Mario Odyssey, and this was definitely the world to do so. But let's talk captures and about what Mario would be doing in this world. So a while ago, I made a completely scuffed version of what a what-if version of the Nintendo series would look like, and the first episode was Mario Odyssey, and I kind of changed the story how Cappy worked for Bowser, and Mario worked with Tiara. It was a whole thing, don't worry about it, but in the story, I changed some things and added two brand new kingdoms, being the Cloud Kingdom and obviously the Ruin Kingdom, expanding them both. So Mario's obviously here to explore this area, where there's tons of not only broken castles and and structures, but also caves that Mario can enter. Yeah, it's getting very Tears of the Kingdom-like. But I thought if there's gonna be caves and spooky areas all over the place, why not add some interesting enemies that have that vibe throughout the Mario franchise that we have already? So I started brainstorming some different creepy enemies that could be here, such as Swoops, which are bats in the Mario franchise. We also did Scuttlebugs, which are different spiders that can fall from the ceiling, and also, of course, Boos. Now, I could come up with some really fun capture for these. For instance, for the Swoop, Mario could turn into a bat and fly around, which is something that we really don't have. We have Glide On, which allows us to glide, but nothing that allows us to really flap and kind of move around freely in the air, this would have been a really cool enemy to do so and fly above the ruined castles and kingdoms in order to spot things from above. And when thinking about the Scuttlebug, I kind of thought of Squitter from Donkey Kong Country 2, which was the spider with the sweet sneakers that was allowed to kind of shoot webs and pause them in midair to use them as platforms. And maybe that's what Mario could do, climb up the side of a cliff, the side of a broken building or something, or use his webs to trap enemies or to make little platforms for him to get over. And the last one I thought of was a phantom mask. A phantom mask would be really, really cool, and maybe this could be like a cool origin as to where they come from. Now, we know they're technically in subcon, but who cares? We're making origin stories here. Maybe Mario opens up some passageway where a lot of them fly out, and for Mario to get deeper within the cave system or throughout a castle, he has to become a phanto and kind of fly in a line following the other ones, which would be a cool kind of espionage secret mission where he'll hop out when any opportunity he gets in order to hide, and he has to keep turning into a phantom mask in order to follow the others deeper into the castle or into the cave. And Mario Galaxy actually had a Boo Mushroom, which turned Mario into Boo Mario, which literally that same exact style and look would have went perfect with Mario Odyssey. So I'm kind of surprised that there were no Boos and that they didn't do this. Maybe they felt like they've done it already and they didn't want to repeat something that they've already did, but at the end of the day, it would have been cool to see Boos in this game as well. This also could have been a way for them to introduce dry bones because we had like para dry bones which just allowed us to flap very very low to the ground in order to grab things nearby the lava so I would have loved to see an actual dry bones where maybe we had to play dead in certain situations or even throw different bones at enemies and stuff would have been really cool so that would have been a really good kingdom to incorporate that capture ability honestly the ruined kingdom was a kingdom that a lot of people will forever remember in Super Mario Odyssey as one of the most creepy bizarre and weirdest style choices they've ever ever chosen for a Mario game, yet the most missed opportunity, the most missed potential ever. And hopefully we do see something very dark and very different for the Mario series in a future installment, but yes, it just pains me to see that the Ruined Kingdom was left as a really cool boss battle arena and not a full-fledged world to explore. But stop what you're doing real quick, leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Mario Odyssey and Mario in general, and be sure that you turn on post notifications when I talk more about Mario Odyssey, other kingdoms that could have got expanded, and other things just 3D Mario in general. But like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.